What's up guys, Chaba here from Game of Conversions and I'm back with another uh, proven sales letter breakdown. Today we're taking a look at the John Carlton sales letter. Now I've broken down a few of his sales letters before, they're all magnificent and the reason why I like John so much is because his copy is very emotional, it's very raw, it has this punch in the gut style storytelling that Chris Haddad has for example who's like a newer copywriter. Uh, but I wanted to break down this ad because it's a great example of using a, an emotional and kind of like what the fuck type of headline and a good story as a hook to uh, get people to notice your, your, um, your ad, uh, your copy and to read more and more of it. Okay, So that's what you want as a copywriter for people to consume more of your copy because the more of it they consume, the bigger the likelihood that they'll actually buy something. Okay, So let's see what's happening here. Okay, And obviously the biggest, most noticeable thing is the headline because it says the naked girls all laughed behind the little pudgy guy's back until he got in a knife fight with three enormous badass bikers. Wow, pretty cool, right? Um, this is a great example of what John Carlton calls incongruous juxtaposition. So this is a very fancy word, but what this means in essence is that you have two contrasting things which shouldn't really work together, but they do. And this creates kind of a like, what the fuck type of... Uh, of uh, like mental picture in your reader because like pudgy guys who girls laugh at usually aren't the action hero type of characters who get in fights with three enormous badass bikers, right? So this headline actually taps into a lot of things. It has naked girls and, you know, naked girls, obviously, uh, this produces a mental picture in men and obviously the uh, target audience for this is men. Um, so that's, that's, that's a plus immediately. Then we have laughed behind someone's back. You know, this taps into a core emotion, uh, the emotion of embarrassment that a lot of people feel. And this is once again, the, the type of, uh, raw copy that John, uh, likes to use because nobody likes the feeling of being laughed at behind their back. Okay. So this once again is, is pretty powerful. We have a pudgy guy. So, uh, it just, what? It makes the reader feel like that, uh, which is good in this context. And then we get the second half of the headline until he got into a knife fight with three enormous badass bikers. So knife fight, this raises emotional arousal immediately because uh, like it's, it's, it might be a life and death situation, right? Especially when it comes to three, which is specific and specific specificity uh, lends credibility to most headlines. And then we have enormous badass bikers. How how good of an expression this is. Enormous badass bikers. Ah, I, I love it. It's uh, This headline isn't really that long compared to other John Carlton headlines, but uh, it, it really gets the point across. And then, very interestingly, uh, in the... In the uh, pre-head, we have a message that actually comes after the headline because probably this is what people read first, like the, um, the headline itself. And then it says, best part, I will put $30 into your account just to check it out yourself. And we'll get to this when we talk about the offer, but it's true. So it really makes people interested in reading more, and that's what you want. And as we go through the lead part of this copy itself, the first few hundred words, you'll see why uh, this type of headline, how you know John Carlton uh, uses this headline and opens it up more so that uh, people get deeper and deeper into his message. But before we go there, before we analyze the lead, I'd like you to I'd like to ask you to like this video if you enjoy copywriting breakdowns, if you're a copywriter or marketer or you have anything to do with copy because my mission with this is to build the biggest uh, free online directory of sales letter breakdowns on YouTube. Uh, we already have like, 57 videos in the playlist. You can check it out, the, the entire playlist. I'm gonna leave a link under this video in the description section. Check it out because there you can you can view every single one of these in-depth breakdown videos. And most people charge a lot of money just for one of these, okay? And now you can watch it for free. So if you enjoyed this, if you wanna support me with this, then please make sure to smash that like button right now. And also, if you're new to the channel, then please consider subscribing because I'm releasing these videos daily and uh, 
if you want to follow along, if you want to check these out, then by subscribing, you are for sure not miss it. So uh, with that being said, let's get to the lead part itself. So this is just like a letter and it's not long at all. It's like four pages, uh, but uh, it's very really personal as well, which you want as a copywriter. But let's see how it, it starts. It says, Dear John, the ladies aren't laughing anymore. Nope. Nowadays, their eyes are filled with nothing but awe and respect for this small, unassuming man. And the key word here is man, because after providing, proving his skills in the fight, he has shown himself to be a man, a man who can kick the ass of anyone who crosses him barehanded or with a knife or with a stick. What this guy has to do with you? Plenty. If you understand what having this kind of respect can mean to you. Not all fighters get respect, no matter how often they win a fight. People just assume it's the size or strength or a lucky punch. But get this, Felix Valencia is a small man, barely 5'5", who looks like he's been in a training to be a couch potato. He doesn't have six pack abs or shirt sleeve splitting biceps or hands that can squeeze coal into diamonds. Nevertheless, he insists he can teach you the skills to earn your own pile of respect almost overnight. No matter what your size, no matter what your size you are, uh, or how out of shape you are, or how little fighting experience you have, none of that matters at all. So this is kind of the lead. It basically gives a promise, an implicit promise to the reader, in that if they continue reading, they'll also get all these cool, cool benefits that we know from research that our target audience for this specific promotion definitely wants. They want to have the power to kick anyone's ass. They want to be able to uh, hold their own uh, against others in a bare knuckle fist fight, in a knife fight, in a stick fight, okay? And a lot of our target audience could be people who, uh, you know, who don't have six pack abs, who aren't like big giant monsters, who don't have big biceps, who aren't really that trained, that, uh, you know, conditioned as fighters. Uh, so we're qualifying every one of those people and we're basically painting the dream a little bit. We're promising something. Uh, we're promising that if they keep reading, they're going to discover how is this possible? How is it possible that a little pudgy guy can, uh, you know, beat up three enormous badass bikers? Uh, how is that possible? Well, the only way to find out is to read further. And that's what people are actually going to do. Uh, now, another cool thing that this part does it that is that it starts... Um, reframing existing false beliefs that our target audience has okay because they have a lot of false beliefs false beliefs like you know you have to be big or strong or you have to land a lucky punch in order to win in a street fight which apparently isn't always the case uh and this is the type of myth that this letter is trying to debunk and we also get like none of this matters at all this debunks false myth and after this little subhead uh, we have a tease of the unique mechanism itself in that, you know, there's this secret, there's this super vicious fighting ability that's very easy to master and it works for bear, bear, bear fighting and uh, I mean it works for both uh, bear handed fighting as well as knife fighting uh, and the only way to discover it is to keep reading. Always keep reading. It's like a tra trailer, okay? Uh, so then we get the most interesting part of the sales letter, the story itself, because this little headline actually probably came from a story that John Carlton was re researching uh, of a guy who uh, walked into a strip club in LA in a very, very rough neighborhood and he wanted to be a bouncer and everybody was laughing at him and you know, tough guys there immediately wanted to punish him but like he held his own against them and he became a legendary bouncer there. And then he was so good, uh, no problems were ever reported after he uh, started working there. So that's the story uh, which gets told here and it's, it's a really good story. I'm gonna read it to you because it's so good. It's one of my favorite stories actually, just so that you can see John Carlton's effective uh, copywriting style and how if you're a good storyteller, you're also a good story seller because stories are the, the core primordial ways of communication 
uh, that we've used as humans throughout the ages to really convey information. And our brains are ha hardwired for stories. And if you can make your story vivid and lifelike and uh, gripping and it, with, with a lot of ups and downs, you know, you can really get people hooked on it. Just think about good series. Just think about a good movie or something. Like you get in a trance when you absorb those stories. And the same thing is happening in copywriting as well. Uh, you absorb these stories and it shifts, shifts your belief system. It promises a transformation. And then ultimately people don't want to buy your product. They want to buy the transformation that your product offers. But, for, but in order to believe that the transformation is possible, you really have to, uh, you know, paint the picture and deconstruct their false beliefs and like, uh, convey all that information in a format that they'll actually consume. And the best format for this is stories. So let's see how this, uh, stories go. Here's the story. The girls who were laughing behind Felix's back were strippers in the most famous biker strip club in Los Angeles. Okay, not famous, dangerous, the most deadly bar in LA. You mix mean bikers with booze and naked babes and you get trouble. Felix walks in and wants the job as a bouncer. Everybody laughs to his face. Behind his back, the girls make $20 bets on how long he'll last. The last bouncer was twice the size of Felix, a trained boxer, and that poor guy was on the sidewalk crying like a baby inside of his first hour on the job. So this really raises the stakes as the story goes. And then we continue. The three biggest, most vicious and psychotic bikers in the joint decided to try to do better than that with Felix. They wanted him hurt and out of the bar immediately. It offended them that this small guy thought that he could handle things. Okay, so this part, it, uh, it, it signals danger, danger, something bad is about to come. And that's why people keep reading. Then we continue. The smallest biker was 200 pounds of twisted muscle. All three had Bowie knives and liked to use them. So vivid details and the, the, the stakes get higher and higher and higher. They enjoyed inflicting pain. What happened next is now legendary in Los Angeles. People in Beverly Hills have heard the story. Little Felix, looking like a kid staring at three enraged bulls, took just 47 seconds to end the fight. So once again, this part, uh, it subverts expectations. And just take a look at this line, how good it is. Looking like a little kid staring at three enraged bulls, he took just 47 seconds to end the fight. Like this is a great example of how you uh, show, you should show and not tell with your copywriting because uh, a lot of copywriters, what they do is that they start describing stuff, but uh, describing it way too logically. This actually describes it in a vivid picture because uh, you want to make people imagine things. This is how our brain works. It's, there, it's a bunch of psychology that goes behind it. Okay. Uh, but, um, uh, but this is actually how uh, persuasion happens and how our mental representations are um, are actually created. I don't know if you're interested in this, leave it, leave a comment below and let me know if you're interested in this because I have a, uh, a degree in psychology actually, actually in cognitive psychology and I studied this. So uh, if you'd like me to tell more about these types of things, I could, but just let me know in the comments uh, so that I can see that there's in enough demand for it. But um, for now, let's just continue with the story. So we continue. Uh, and those three biker, bikers called him sir after that every time they met, which wasn't much because they stopped coming to the bar. Felix scared the living crap out of them. Felix was head bouncer for the bar for the next year. No one who knew who he was screwed with, screwing with him ever again. It was the most peaceful, boring year the strippers had ever seen. You don't get respect by t talking big. You don't get respect by waving a gun around or having a flashy knife in your belt. And you don't get respect with, pretty, with a pretty colored belt from a fancy dojo. Nope, you get respect just one way, by earning it. So that's the little story here. I'm sure that you realize now how effective it is and how gripping it is. And it can go on and on. Like if this was three times longer, you would still watch, watch it, right? Because it's interesting. It has vivid details. It, uh, it makes you want to like consume more and more information. 
So uh, the last part, you know, getting respect by earning it. This is something that resonates with our target audience a lot. So these are men who like they want respect in their lives. They're like these tough guys, these macho type of guys in most cases. But, you know, they've probably seen several of these uh, self-defense systems before. Maybe they have uh, a lot of training in various martial arts. But even them, when they read a headline like this, they're going to be like, what? Okay, I'm a big guy and I know, I don't know, kickboxing or something. But like, how is it possible that this pudgy guy can fight back three enormous badass bikers who have knives? Like, I want to re read it. Uh, so this this uh, promotion is both useful to uh, already seasoned professionals, I would say, it, who aren't necessarily seasoned in knife fighting, probably, uh, as well as people who are way more beginners uh, and they're looking for a new system that can really elevate them to the next level. Although I would be really car careful with something like this because, I mean, knife fighting is still knife fighting. Y even if you're the best martial artist in the world, you can st you, you should still avoid it because it's deadly. So um, after this part, after the story part, we have uh, proof elements because at this point, our readers are wondering, okay, this sounds cool and all, but who's this guy? Who's this Felix guy? Because uh, how come I never heard about him? Well, uh, we get credentials for Felix. Uh, he's been trained for five solid years by the great Dan Insenado. You know, probably this name means a lot to our target audience. You know, he became world famous in his 20s as Edgar's brawler. You know, once again, more, uh, more proof that he knows what he's doing. And he has a background in like all sorts of like GKD and, and Filipino fighting arts. And he was undefeated and you know house of champions and i like this like cops and federal agents are begging for just a week of felix time including swat teams from all over the, all over the nation the cia and fbi and even the house of champions martial arts school the best of the best so all these guys all these hardcore uh, like groups are going to felix uh for tips okay and uh, this grip gives a lot of credibility and proof to felix and then we get back to the reader because ultimately it's it's always about the reader. So John Carlton even says, but again, what's this got to do with you, right? Well, would you like to learn the most hardcore of his fighting secrets taught in such a simple way that you can literally learn these brutal end of now and the fight now secrets almost overnight? So this is the big question that people are going to say yes to probably. And that also serves as a micro commitment. So this is a, more of an advanced uh, persuasion psychology thing, but micro commitments increase the likelihood of people saying yes to something a little bit later on. And then we get to the offer itself, which is an irresistible offer because it's free and it has some bonuses as well. It has a money back guarantee. You have a year long money back guarantee. It's crazy. Uh, and it goes like this. Here's the deal. You know, um, Felix is, is so sought after that, you know, uh, he teaches a lot of people, he's very valuable, but not, right now he agreed to like create a video series uh, because of three motivations, uh, so that you as the reader, as the average person can learn his crafts, even if, even though he's so busy. And I like how, you know, uh, there's a reason behind the product. It's not just like, hey, he created a course to make money. No, actually John uh, uses reason why copy which is really important to uh, justify why you're actually pitching, pitching something. So the first reason why is that he wants to be among the most famous martial artists of the world. So uh, because of that, you know, he wants to get to reach more people, get more famous, uh, get that ce celebrity status, maybe something like that. So motivation, reason why, number one. Reason why, number two, uh, I mean, reason why number two is that he wants to make money. This is just straight up honesty from John Carlton, which people will appreciate. So this uh, just raises trust uh, in, in, in readers. And then the big reason is that he wants to uh, help you stay safer, especially in a post 9-11 world where, you know, a lot of people feel a lot of uncertainty. And um, John even uses like... Uh, 
he, he taps into the collective um, fears and problems of the target audience at that time, because this letter probably was created a few years after 9-11, but John even mentions that the 9-11 terrorists all studied vicious knife fighting techniques. Okay, so um, like this taps into that unconscious fear that a lot of people are, are, are feeling, and it makes the letter even more effective. So then here's what I have for you. There are two videotapes in the special package. So we have a little bit of features here, and then we have the benefits, which are, you guessed it, fascinations. So once again, you can see how important fascinations are to copywriting. Every single good promotion has fascinations, and I made tons of videos about fascinations before. So if you're new to this channel, if this is the first video in the series that you watch, make sure to check out um, previous videos that I did from Clayton Makepeace, from Mel Martin, from Eugene Schwartz, from David Deutsch, from uh, Paris Lampropoulos. They ha they're all excellent, excellent uh, fascination writers. And these are the little fascinations that build desire in people, but also create a little bit of curiosity so that the only way that they can uh, solve this curiosity uh, is to buy the product. So then we get like this messaging uh, regarding exclusivity. It's like special deal for TRS hot list guys only. So this probably went out to an email list or like a mailing list uh, that a guru or a company or someone had this uh, particular sales letter. And um, you know, there's a reason why once again, uh, why there's a special deal because you are in a special group and then you get a better price because normally this program sells for uh, $99 and you know we have a price anchor basically this acts as like the regular price of the program but you know since you're special uh, I have already put $30 into your TRS account so now you can get this for just $69 so this is a price drop uh, which immediately makes the this price more appealing, uh, and you know there's also 100% money back guarantee, so it's very important to alleviate as much risk as you can when it comes to offers. So there's this money back guarantee, um, and there's also like back loaded with a free video. And how this works is that even if people request for a refund, they can still keep one of the videos because there are two videos that come in this package. So that's why we can say, you know, it's free. You can try it out yourself free. So even if you don't buy it, you just try it out and you request for a refund, you still uh, receive one of the videos. Uh, you can still keep one of the videos. And then what I especially like is that there's uh, ordering instructions here. It's like, hey, here's how it works. Call this office and whoever answers, tell them test drive and then you'll be this insider. You know, you'll immediately get $30 credited to your account and then it's going to be a great deal but uh, like don't don't um, postpone your your uh, decision too long because uh, this deal won't be available for too long so this makes people feel like they're part of an inner circle okay they're special they're they have access to exclusive deals which is which is pre uh, pretty cool if you think about it and uh, even though there's a little bit of uh, urgency and scarcity uh, for this irresistible offer, we still have something like your choice. So you can choose which video you want to keep. Uh, it can either be hand to hand or stick fighting video. Uh, and it's your choice. So this just subtly gives the choice back to the reader because people want to feel in charge, even if they're getting persuaded. You don't want to it cannot really motivate people, okay? If they want to do something, they're going to do something. Or if they don't want to do something, they're not going to do it. But you can uh, guide them so that they make the decision themselves. You can still influence their decision, but they have to feel like they are making the decision. And this is both true in like a buying context, a dating context, a psychology therapy session, um, I don't know, relationships with your doctor. People need to feel like they are the ones who are taking responsibility and making the decision because uh, that's when they lower their guards and that's when uh, they actually buy. So you want to help them uh, get to that point. And then after this, you know, we just build a little bit more desire. We have a call to action. It's like, hey, you know, do it right now. Uh, 
you only have a certain amount of time, like 11 days until this uh, $30 is in your account. So it's this is kind of like a little like launch. So it has an end date, as, like, at least with the with the price. Uh, and then just hurry, all right? In 11 days, that uh, fat $30 in your account vanishes. Don't let that happen. So this is just straight up urgency. And then we have the sign off and then we have some proof elements. So these are the testimonials. Uh, John could have used the testimonials here as well, but in the PS, you know, it's also a great, great uh, part to use it. So yeah, it's uh, it's not that long actually, but it's, it's, it's really powerful. It's uh, very personal. It has a great story. It has a great headline. It has a good offer. Uh, maybe, you know, one thing I, maybe that could be improved, especially nowadays, uh, is to do a multi-step price drop because you can start at like 199 and then drop it to 99 and then uh, drop it to uh, 67 or something because uh, as, as long as you can create reasons why behind it, uh, you can still do that and it will probably boost conversions a little bit. But all in all, I love it and I hope you enjoyed this video as well. If you did, then please smash the like button right now and also subscribe to the channel, hit the little notification icon and also leave a comment with your number one takeaway. I'm really curious. Uh, let me know what you enjoyed, what you didn't enjoy and uh, I respond to every single comment, by the way. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.